Hello, welcome to this video on VNet connectivity. Uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about VNet to VNet connectivity. In an earlier video, we talked about point to site connectivity, and in a future video, we will look at site to site connectivity. In my Azure subscription here, I've got two virtual networks, one called DevNet and one called Test VNet. Um, these two networks have non overlapping IP address ranges and I've deployed a single virtual machine to each of these uh, networks. In fact, DevNet has a series of virtual machines deployed to its network. Uh, we can see this configuration now. If we um, access uh, DevNet first and go to Dashboard, we can see the name DevNet and we can see a list of virtual machines there, one of which has an IP address on the 192.168.1 network. If we select test VNet, that's got a single machine deployed to it with an IP address of 1311704. So think of these two networks as being different branches um, in your organization that you now want to interact and communicate. Um, this VNet to VNet connectivity can be configured between VNets in the same Azure subscription or between VNets in different Azure subscriptions. And hopefully at the end of this process, the two virtual machines will be able to connect to each other. Now, we're going to start off um, this demonstration on the configure uh, section of one of the VNets. doesn't matter which one we start with. So we'll go to the test VNet there, and we'll go to configure. Now here we see, uh, for test VNet, we can see a list of its DNS servers. If we scroll down, we can see its virtual address space. And we can also see the connection type. And we can see there one tick box says point to site connectivity. So there's no option through here for VNet, for VNet to VNet connectivity or for site to site connectivity. Um, in fact, that, that will also be the same for uh, DevNet as well. If we click on DevNet, here we see uh, uh, this time DevNet has a DNS server, internal DNS server. Uh, again, we can see the address space, um, but no um, tick box for uh, any of the connective and point site. So uh, what we need to do is start our configuration for VNet to VNet connectivity, connectivity outside of this section. So if we, if we just step back, so back on our network section, um, next to virtual networks, we see local networks. And what we need to do first, before we can set up the uh, correct uh, type of connectivity, is list local networks. Now, the name of uh, this is sometimes misleading. We're not talking about listing networks that are in um, your Azure subscription. What we're talking about is listing networks that would typically be on-premise. So think of, it, um, think of it in terms of a site-to-site -site link. We have our VNets uh, in Azure, and then we have our on-premise networks in your branch offices, your data centers. Well, typically for site-to-site -site connection, they would be the local networks that we would list. And by listing them in the local network section, we are telling Azure that these are remote networks that you, uh, and traffic towards them should be sent through gateways. Well, for VNet to VNet connectivity, it's exactly the same. We need to tell um, Azure that these networks need to be contacted through a gateway. Now, um, it looks a bit odd because we're inside the same subscription, but it's the same principles that apply. So if I go to local networks, there are no local networks configured, and I need to add two. Two local networks, one for each side of the VNet connection. So if we say add a local network, and we give it um, a name, so we'll say, this one we'll call DevNet. And this is where it gets a bit odd. Here we've got um, a box that asks for a VPN device. Now again, if you think of this in terms of a site-to-site -site link, this would be the IP address of the VPN device at your remote office. Um, the VPN that Azure are going to send traffic to you know, to get access to the local network we're about to configure. Now, right now, we don't have 
a, a VPN configured, a VPN device configured inside Azure, and it does say that box optional. So you might be tempted to leave this box, but in actuality, if you don't put information inside here, then you won't be able to set up the VNet to VNet connectivity. So it might be weird, but what we've got to do right now is put any public IP address into this box. This IP address will be changed later on when we get our actual VPN um, gateway addresses. So configure any public IP address in there for now, and then move to the address space. So this will be the address space of the local network on the other side of the connection. In my case, it's the starting IP address and mask of the DevNet network. So that DevNet network is on the 19281 address space. So that's what I'll put in there. Tick the box, and we've got one local network for our DevNet network. Now I need two inside here, because we've got two ends of my virtual network connections. So what we're going to do is say new again. So bottom left of the screen, we say new and add local network. And this time it is for the test VNet network. And just the same as before, we need just to put in an address here. That is a dummy address that we swapped out later on when we get our actual gateway addresses. So if I say next, and then the address space used on that network. So to the box, say complete. And my second local network will be created. Now that I've got both local networks uh, configured, we can go back to our virtual networks. And we'll start with the DevNet network. On the DevNet network, if we go to configure, and here we see now that we have this site to site connectivity uh, tick box that wasn't there before. The reason it is there is because we've added those local networks. So if I select connect to the local network, and now I've selected connect to local network, I can choose the network I want to connect to. So from, from DevNet, I want to connect to test VNet. Now you'll see there that a balloon's appeared. And this balloon reminds me that I need a gateway subnet for this configuration. Now this gateway subnet that we configure will hold uh, the gateway addresses and the gateways that Microsoft create for us to connect from our VNet to the outside world. In this case, connecting from my VNet to another VNet um, in Azure, but it could be from my VNet to uh, an on-premise network. Um, so we need to add a gateway subnet, and it picks the sort of next available range uh, for me. And you can see it's picked a, an address range there. Uh, if you're happy with that range, then great. If not, it can be altered. But I'm going to leave it as is and say save. So on the DevNet network, we're telling it that I want to connect to the test VNet network. We need to do exactly the same now for um, test VNet. We need to configure it to use the site to site connectivity. And we need to use it, uh, tell it which site to connect to and make sure we've got a gateway subnet as well. So if we go to the test VNet network, on here we select site to site connectivity and then we tell it which local network I want it connected to. And again here you see a gateway subnet has already been created for me uh, previously. So if we're happy again with that um, range, we just say save. So both my VNets now have been updated uh, to connect to uh, local networks. When we configure site-to-site uh, -site connectivity in, our, in one of our later videos, you'll notice that the setup is almost exactly the same up until this point. So let's go back to DevNet. 
and under dashboard so under dashboard we should now see that this gateway component has appeared um, we can see that the gateway devnet is going to connect to test vnet but although we've got this this representation of the gateway itself the gateway is not not yet um, created so um, from devnet the bottom of the screen we've got uh, a, a plus to create a gateway so at the bottom we say create gateway and we need got a type of two uh, gateways here uh, static routing gateway and dynamic routing gateway we need to choose static routing gateway for this um, the two different gateway options refer to two different types of uh, gateway that we can um, purchase either general routing gateways or policy based gateway gateways and we use static routing gateways for these type of vnet to vnet connections so we say static routing gateway and it says do you want to create this gateway yes we do and it'll create a static routing gateway for me and it will assign me a ip address a public ip address for this gateway to use now this will take some time and it could take anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes or more to create this gateway uh, component um, so while this is doing it for devnet if we go to test vnet and dashboard again we've got the gateway there so we will say create gateway and static routing gateway on this side as well and this gateway object as well will be created uh, again taking 10 to 15 minutes to do uh, so while these gateway objects have been created for me uh, we're just going to pause the video and then we'll come back so it's been roughly about 15 minutes and um, both uh, gateways have been created now and um, we can see back here uh, under my devnet virtual network that the gateway object is created and we've now been given a gateway IP address now you want to write this IP address down because you'll be using the IP address in a few minutes or rather your version of the IP address you want to write down because you'll be using it in a few minutes um, if we go to test vnet Um, exactly the same gateway created and we've got a gateway IP address as well so this is the uh, these are IP address public IP addresses that address uh, the gateways on those virtual networks so now we've got these real public IP addresses we can go swap out the dummy VNet addresses we put in previously on our local networks so if we step back go to local networks and this time we'll start with devnet the devnet address space and we'll say edit and now we swap out the dummy VPN address with the devnet VPN address and we just follow the wizard through once we've done that making that change and we do the same for test vnet as well we edit that and we swap out the dummy vnet address with the actual vpn device address on that virtual network oops so we'll wait for devnet to finish and that's like a minute just to uh, update You've seen the error message pop up there this sometimes happens in azure when you're trying to perform the same action against two different objects uh, the process gets locked out so we'll wait for the test vnet to uh, finish updating uh, dev vnet sorry and then we'll configure test vnet and we'll just pause the video while that's happening so there we go both local networks now updated and we can see they've been updated with their vpn gateway addresses so we're almost ready now to connect our two virtual networks but there is one more thing we need to do before we um, connect them and I'm afraid this next bit is in PowerShell now I don't know how much experience you have with PowerShell I encourage you all to um, get as much hands-on experience with PowerShell as possible and in later videos we will explore um, using PowerShell to create um, VNets to create virtual machines and all the other standard elements of Azure um, 
in PowerShell right now, we need to ke uh, create a shared key. And this shared key will be used to authenticate um, the, the, and secure the connections between the two gateway devices. The shared key needs to match on both ends of the connection. Um, so we're going to open up PowerShell. If you haven't configured already PowerShell to um, connect to your Azure subscription, you'll need to do that first. Now, if we open up this PowerShell window, so as you can see here, I've already typed in the two um, PowerShell commands required. Um, they're essentially each command is, is uh, one side of the connection. So the command that required is set dash Azure VNet gateway key. Then we need the name of the VNet, the local site that it's connecting to, and the shared key we want to use. Now I had to use that same command twice, once for each end of the connection. And you can see that um, it successfully created uh, the key, uh, both ends, so that's all looking good. It took about uh, 30 seconds to a minute to run each of those uh, commands. Now we've got the shared keys in place. If we flip back to Azure and we'll connect our gateways. So here we are back in the Azure portal and we've got DevNet and TestNet. If we select one of these networks, if I choose DevNet and go to the dashboard, and there you see our gateway is connected. Something uh, special happens when you when you create a VNet to VNet connection, and that is that uh, once these shared keys in place, the virtual networks should automatically try and connect each, with each other. Now this um, connection will take a few minutes, so I've actually paused the video to wait for this connection to to establish, and after I'd run the PowerShell uh, commands. Um, you will know that it's connecting. It will say under the name of the uh, local network there that um, the, the, the gateway is trying to connect. Also, if you look at the bottom of the screen, uh, we have this uh, option, this button at the bottom that says disconnect. Um, while it's connecting, that will say connect, but it will be grayed out. Um, so that this has worked fine. If I go to uh, test VNet, um, exactly the same. We've got our VNet to VNet connection when this opens up. There you go, VNet to VNet connection. And again, our only option there is to disconnect. Um, on either of these two, if you say manage keys here, on the bottom of the screen, manage keys. And there you can see the shared key that we manually configured. So all in all, successful tests. If we fired in up if either of the virtual machines now and we ping the other, that would work. So thank you for your time and keep it out for our third video in this connection series that looks at configuring site-to-site -site connections. Thank you.